Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Hawkeye. Another great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So immediately picking up after the last episode, we have the confrontation between uh, Clint and Kate. And obviously the introduction is like, wait, who are you? Like, I'm Kate Bishop, I'm Clint. And she's like, wait, you're Hawkeye? She's like fangirling out, she's tripping out, like, oh my god, I can't believe, you know, it's like, right, those guys, like, you know, I, you know, I'm pretty good at martial arts and stuff like that, that's why she's able to hold them all, but she's like, you should see the other guys. And he was like, I did see the other guys. And she's like, oh, okay. So they go back to her place, and obviously he needs her to change, because he's like, right, I need to get the suit back. I mean, I guess, because it also trails back to, like, right, there are a lot of people he pissed off. There are a lot of people who are running in fear because of what he did. As That's kind of the main... I, I think it's like, one, you don't want your past running out there. But also, like, he knows whoever has that suit on is in danger. It's like, you're attracting every enemy I ever made as Ronan. So I need to get that suit back. I think it's interesting that... And maybe it speaks volumes that the fact is he never destroyed the suit. Because maybe he wanted to be a constant reminder of who he can be without his family, and he never wants to be that person again. So maybe there's some level to that, or maybe there's something secret in the suit that he doesn't want to discover. I don't know. But uh, he's getting it from Kate, and I love Kate. It's like tripping out. She's like, oh my God, be cool, be cool. Like she's fangirling out right now, because it's like, yeah, just because like, it's like, yeah, he's her favorite Avenger and everything. So it's like meeting, you know, literally meeting your hero and everything. So like she's tripping out, and he's asking, like, man, you're like, because she's, he's like, how old are you? Like 18? She's like, I'm 22. He's like, it's pretty much the same thing. It's like, you're still just a kid in my eyes. Uh, especially because, you know, especially because he has kids not too much. Um, not too much younger than her. So I, when he looks at her, all he sees is his own kids, you know, I think. So it's like, right. If it weren't for her, he would be a, away from all this. He'd be actually, he would actually be spending time with his family right now, being able to enjoy Christmas with his kids if it wasn't him getting mixed up in all of her shenanigans. So I even love that she came down with the boat. She's like, yeah, can you sign us? And he's like, well, he's like, well, I've got stuff to do. She's like, yeah, but afterwards, can you sign? I'm like, I still love it. It's like, yeah, dude. Because you see, we saw it a little bit with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's the only time we've really, I mean, we've gotten instances of it because Tony's the one who ended up like reveling in the celebrity of being Iron Man and we're just being Tony Stark in general, but Iron Man adding that boost to it but it's like other than that like Falcon and the Winter Soldier is one of the other few times we really got to see like the celebrity of being a superhero in this universe and stuff like that kind of like oh people recognizing you and stuff like that uh, it's still that thing of like most people probably wouldn't look twice at him but a lot of people do recognize him as like because they have to be like wait are you Hawkeye because he looks like a regular dude so you wouldn't know it but it's like oh wait you are Hawkeye aren't you and it's like yeah but at first he's like, right, did you ever, like, did anyone ever see you? Because she brings up, like, where she got it from. It was a black market. It's like, oh, you paid for it? He's, she's like, no. Like, it's kind of extenuating circumstances and stuff like that. But it's like, okay, so, okay, cool. I got the suit. Now, uh, when it's all said and done, um, did anyone see you take it? She's like, no, I kept the mask on the, the entire time like a pro. I just find that funny because, like, even with the mask thing, like, some of the heroes do wear masks, but you just see them without their mask on a lot of times, especially, like, the OG Avengers is like, you know, Tony's like, everyone knows who Iron Man is, you know, and then like Cap isn't always wearing his mask. So there's an element of that. It, it's just a whole thing. So I, that's why I just like, oh, like keeping the mask on like a pro. But it's like, yeah, I, I guess, you know, it's still applicable in certain cases because there's still plenty of other heroes in this universe who wear masks and keep their mask on. But regardless, um, but the fact is they know exactly. They just, a moment she says that she, they're like Kate Bishop. And it's like, yeah, they found her because she's like, right. My name is like on the, on the outside too. So they immediately know who she is. All they had to do was follow her back here. Uh, and also correction. I was like, wasn't their name like the tracksuit gang? It, they say it in this episode, the tracksuit mafia. And even Kate was like, isn't that a little on the nose? Like, is that really their name? And it's just like, it is what it is. Um, but we saw the scene in the trailer. It's still so dope that he does it. Like the Molotov gets thrown. The guy, uh, Hawkeye grabs it, throws it back out. I love it. And it's just they're, they're on fire. And I just love the whole thing. Like, oh, bro, bro. Like, it was serious. Like, I love the stereotype of just being like, yo, bro, 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 bro. The entire time. I love it so much. And the fact is that it's like, yo, bro, there was like fire everywhere and everything. And even Kate, like, uh, shooting one of the Molotovs out of their hands. And um, the van that they're in catches fire a little bit. So they had to bail. Uh, her trick shots are pretty good because the fact is that she hit that fire extinguisher. I don't... I don't think that was the point. Maybe it was. I don't know. It went flying out. And he was like, go, the, one of the uh, tracksuit mafia guys outside was like, go ahead, throw something else. You know? Uh, but it did set off the sprinkler, so her place isn't completely burned to the ground. So they end up taking off. 
and um, they need a place to kind of lay low. And I love that she's like, and I love that it's like, right, I was like, oh, we got to get supplies. And she's like, what are we going to get? And then they're just getting like Neosporin and stuff like that and like uh, rubbing alcohol and stuff like that. And she says like, oh. Like, oh, we're getting Avengers supplies and stuff like that? He's like, no. Oh, I, she, he's like, we got to find some place to lay low. She's like, oh, like an Avengers place? Like Avengers Tower type of place? Is that we don't have Avengers Towers anymore. Tony sold that years ago. And then she's just like, that's sad on so many levels. Because, once again, we got our famous Falcon and the Winter Soldier line of Tony didn't pay us. So that's still up in the air. Um... Now, if that that doesn't seem like that's general knowledge, only if we we as the audience know that's general knowledge as general knowledge now, but not everyone knows that that's a thing of like, oh yeah, like not everyone in the um, not none of the Avengers got paid for doing all that superhero stuff, so there's that element to it. But that also brings up something that people have theorized for a while, like who bought Avengers Tower from Tony? There's like the back, they're like, oh, is it now the Baxter Building tying it to like the Fantastic Four? Or is it Oscorp, as in Norman Osborn, you know? So there's always been those theories about potentially who bought the Tony's, who bought Avengers Tower. No one's really uh, talked about it yet. I wonder, is it like, technically, does the government own it or something like that? They have to lay low at her um, her aunt's place because her aunt's out of town. And oh, she, well, she's going to be on vacation for like the winter. Um, so now it's the situation of trying to figure out what to do next and i do love that like he does enter dad mode around kate because it's like because later on he had left and came back and he was checking out her um wounds and he was like well you kind of did that wrong like did you actually clean it like i said he was at he was he kind of went in dad mode a little bit there and i thought that was actually sweet and super adorable um because i don't know if like like i'm not Maybe there's going to be some level of that for Kate of, like, she hasn't had much of a father figure in her life since her dad died. Like, you know, she's not trying to replace anyone, but maybe Clint kind of comes a close second. I mean, because he is a, a hero, he does, in fact, inspire her. He has inspired her and so many others, and she kind of talks about that later on. But um, Clint, like, had her stay behind so that he could go check and pick up the suit. Um Dressing up like, you know, just doing your little covert thing or just like just blending in, uh, you know, pretending to be a firefighter to kind of sneak back in there. But by the time he goes there, yep, the suit's already gone. And then he looks and sees that there's like a uh, sticker on one of the fire trucks that says NYC um, LARPing. And then he looks it up and it's like one of the firefighters, uh, his name is Grills, ended up taking this suit. He's like, yo, you always talk about my cosplay, like my LARPing, my costume is messed up. He's like, well, look at this. And he's like going on ninja style. And it's like, cool, 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 cool. He hijacked your suit for, co uh, not, well, eh, borderlines, cosplay purposes, essentially, but more specifically LARPing. Because I, I don't think that cosplay and LARPing have to be mutually exclusive. You can be cosplaying while LARPing, but just because you're, you know, because you, I can't you could just cosplay on its own, but by LARPing, you are cosplaying to a certain extent, I, I, I guess. Maybe that's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting too caught up in the details of it. But, uh, yeah, like, he ends up meeting up with his kids later, and he's telling them, like, yeah, I need to stay. Uh, his daughter's the one that's kind of like, yeah, something's up, Dad. You gotta, you gotta cut. He's like, no, no, it's good. And she's like, are you gonna be home by Christmas? He's, she, she was hoping, like, this could be their first Christmas, because I think prior to this, there was always work, you know, Avenger work, superhero work, but now it's like, you know, or well, even spy work with S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's like, no, 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 I'm gonna be home. It's like, you know, he's got six days to get home uh, for Christmas. And it's like, you know, making a promise. I love that like, the old, his oldest son, it's like, oh, it's the one in charge. She's like, yeah, but he's an idiot. Yeah, but I might be an idiot, but I have seniority. And she and he's like, right, he's not, ex Cooper's not really in charge. You are. And she's like, okay. And he's like, yeah, I got this, dad. And then his daughter's like, you don't have anything, Coop. You know, so having to kind of balance that all. And I, uh, he wants Kate to stay in one spot, but she's not going to listen. I love, he's like, you're not going to listen to me, are you? She's like, I want to, because it's like, I love and admire you because you're like, you're my favorite Avenger. But no, like under these circumstances, because my mom's going to freak out and worry if I don't show up to work, which we find out, like we get a better understanding of what the family does. Her mom owns Bishop Security. I'm assuming that's something that's got found it after like her husband, like probably after everything that went down during New York, that's probably when this got found it. So she's kind of an heiress to this whole operation. Operation. Granted, she wants nothing to do with it, but we'll get to that later. Uh, she wants to talk to her mom, but oh, lo and behold, Jack's there. So she's trying to like, oh, like talk to Jack. And she's being very coy and on the nose about some of the questions she's asking. I love that. Um, 
Well, for one, we got some clarifications on some stuff, like, as they were, like, heading, because it's, like, right, if you, because she's, like, yeah, if I go to, to work, it's a literal security company, so, like, I'll, it's one of the safest places I can be, and so, like, he walks on the other side of her, she's, like, oh, you're just trying to be a gentleman, he's, like, no, actually, like, this will be the ear I can hear out of, uh, better, and she's, like, oh, how did that happen, and he was, like, well, and he thinks back to stuff throughout the years, and he's, like, uh, it's hard to tell. It's like it literally could have been a number of things. Like it just, I guess, like the justification. That, I was wondering whether they'd answer or not. But it's like, yeah, all the stuff I've been up to over the years, all the smashing into stuff, all the dangerous situations, all the explosions have taken a toll on my hearing, little by little. And uh, yeah, you know, it's hard to pinpoint what exactly it was. Uh, but I love that he had ended up giving her his number because she was like, wait, 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 you haven't taught me. I mean, you told me how to lose a tail, but I mean that, you know, I was all, already in the process of learning it. But what about the trick arrows? He's like, there are no trick arrows. And she was, he's like, here's my number. And she and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let it ring, you know, just so I can make sure. And it's like, cool. She's like, I'm going to call you. He's like, no, please don't. It's only supposed to be in emergencies. If you call me and it's not an emergency, I'm going to block you and I'm going to delete it. And I love it. It's just so cool because she's geeking out so much. Even later on, she's texting him. I'm like, oh, don't pretend like you're busy out uh, with your friends. B busy out with your friends because we both know you don't have any. I was like, shut up, Kate. I love it. And then she's like, yeah, the mean responses are good. But then it's actually the cops calling her, asking her questions about her place. And she's like, oh, luckily I wasn't there that night. Because it's like, right, because don't want to answer too many questions about what you were up to. Especially because the news is now wondering whether or not you were at Armand's, Armand's place. Because you in the Ronin suit showed up there. So it's like, cool, we already got reports about Ronin being back actively. And now you're connected to a crime scene. So that's going to be asking too many questions. And... I don't know if she's necessarily put it together that Hawkeye was Ronin just that he wants to suit. So she, she might be thinking like, oh, this is some Avengers stuff. Like they need it for classified stuff for whatever reason. So I don't know if she's necessarily put it together. And even if she had, because I'm curious like how that will make her feel if she finds out that Hawkeye was Ronin. I mean, that Clint was Ronin, that like he went off killing bad guys, regardless of anything. Like I'm curious to get her perspective on it because that might like dim that light she has towards Clint. Like, oh, you're inspiring. Like, you know, because he doesn't think much of it because she's like, you need more, br you need a, a br because like there was another archer and it's like, oh, that's supposed to be you. And he was like, no, that's supposed, that's cat, um, Katniss from um, Hunger Games. And she's like, you need to rebrand yourself because I think out of any, because he's so low key and he's always kept it that way on purpose. It's like, I don't want the public like, you know, all up in my business. So I keep it low key. Like I, I don't sell toys. I don't do any like the more like uh, merchandising side of things. But she's like, it is a branding um She's like, it is a branding issue because she talks about the fact is you don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Like people, they, you know, that whole thing of how like you're kind of cold and disconnected. It's like that was so OK in the past. But now everyone wants a more um, sincere, like uh, sincerity when it comes to like their heroes. They want heroes to have their heart on their sleeves. I feel like you get that with like you, you get that with your young pups like Peter. Um I mean, the others, you know, it's just like Clint's not here to ooze charisma and just being like, no, I'm just going to be me. I'm here to get my job done. Like Natasha was kind of in that same regard as well. So I think they're kind of like, that's where they shine. But then you had like, Steve had the cheat code because it's like, yo, I'm the, I'm Captain America. I'm all about the truth and justice. So it's kind of like, he kind of got the leeway with that and just who and what he represented, what he stood for. Tony had like the charisma of the group and Thor too as well. Could they even said it in the play of like, yeah, we're kind of like, like they made a joke about, uh, Captain America and, um, Thor being handsome and stuff like that. I, I just think that's funny. Um, she's talking about what you do is important. Don't like shortchange yourself because you inspired people. He inspired her to be who she is to, you know, do everything she can to, you know, become as skilled as she is because she wants to protect her mom. Um, but obviously like the whole Jack thing is like, right. I'm going to invite my, like, yeah, I'll come over for dinner. And then, you know, then I get to, you know, on one condition, I get to pick the topics. So that ends up being a whole thing. Cause like, while she's having dinner with her mom and Jack, your boy, uh, because he was telling uh, Kate that this after he gets his suit, he's most likely going home. So it's like, yeah, this will be the last time they meet. So he's saying goodbye to her. But uh, yeah, he's going LARPing. And I love that. It's like he wants to go talk to Grills, but the lady leading it, she's like, no, you can't. Um, she's like, I know who you are, but like we have a, he's like, what are the rules? And it's a sign up. And she's like, okay, name it. He's like, no, thanks. Uh, email address, that's classified. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to like fill this out. And it, he does, and it's like, oh, here's the scroll. It's like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's what you live by. And he gets on the bathroom. He's like, oh, don't forget your armament. He's like, 
do I have to? And he's wearing the armor, he's got the sword, and I love just the slow motion as he's like LARPing his way through, and then at one point doing that spin circle, taking everyone out. I love it. He, and it just like, the, he bumps in the sword in the slow mo. Goodness! It's so good! I love how cheesy and amazing it is. And then he meets girls and girls, he's like, yeah, I got, the, I want this, he's like, wait, are you the real Hawkeye? He's like, yes. Now this can go one of two ways. I can pretend to kill you with this fake sword and take the suit. Or I can punch you in real life and take the suit. It's up to you. He's like, let me kill you. He's like, what? He's like, no, let me kill you. And I love that Bart is such a stubborn bastard. He's like, no, it's like, it's for pretend and you won't let him. It's like, he's asking you, like, please, like, it'd be the coolest, like, come on, like, you're a hero in real life, let, let me do this, it, I get some street cred from this, but it's like, I love that, like, Bart at first was like, no, I'm not even gonna let you pretend kill me, no, you're not getting that, it's like, ah, oh, fine, and he's like, accept it, and the guy's like, no, we have to, like, fight it out in combat, and so... It's like, yeah, oh, you have to take this potion. And they're whispering like, no, he's not taking a potion. Oh, why isn't he? And she's like, oh, can we get this over with? I love it so much. It's so dorky and I love it. It's so good. It's so good. And then when they're also like slinging swords, that dude's like, cling, cling, cling. And he stops partway through, but I thought he's going to do it forever. Because Bart just kept looking at him. And the guy just goes, cling. But I think he just stopped because, like, all right, uh, you're looking at me weird. So it's like. Like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, just, we're supposed to make this so cool. He's like, go ahead and just finish it. And then, like, it's like, oh, Grills wins and everything. And they're like, right, we got to burn the corpse. And he's just like, ah. But Grills hands over the suit and everything. He's like, oh, man, that was so dope. He's like, yeah, it's all good. And he was like, yeah, man. He's like, yeah, you could just call me Clint. He's like, wait, I could just call you Clint? Yeah. And it's like, holy crap. He's like, oh, but he's like, this is, all, this is like the best moment of my life. And the guy's like, eh. And, you know, Clint's like, eh, it's it, I, not for me. He's like, come on, you had a little fun. He was like, yeah. And Merry Christmas gave him dap. And it's like, he's like, oh, oh, by the way, I'm Grills. Nice to meet you, Grills. It's like, that's so cool. Because we never had those small, like, you don't have moments, like, you have little moments like that in the movies. But it's like, you got to get to what you got to get to. So having these low-key moments with the heroes, I think, is so fun. And to be able to have that. Because you probably wouldn't be able to have a moment like that. You would, but it'd probably be a smaller thing in a movie. Being able to play it, like, you know, like, the fact, fact is that, um... He has to do this. It's so like, uh, like old man Hawkeye, just like, oh man, I'm trying to get home to my kids, man. You know, I, I love it. Uh, you know, because the whole John McClane thing he's got going on, just like, man, just, I'm too old for this. Well, a little Danny Glover lethal weapon, uh, Murtaugh, a little Murtaugh, little John McClane all mixed in one. It's just like, I'm too old for this, man. I, I'm just want to go home. So he's got the suit. And what's interesting, though, he was talking to his uh, wife, and she's like, so she knows all about it. The kids don't know about him being Ronan, but I guess it's like, right, there's only 100% honesty in our relationship. So, like, I always tell her what I've done, what I'm all about. So she knows. So he's like, so she's like, oh, you're dealing with your suit situation? He's like, yeah, and the track suit mafia. He's like, ah, oh, those idiots again? I'm like, I love that. Because I think that's so sweet that it's like, of course you got to let your partner in. Like, there's no secrets in this relationship, what we're all about. and do. He's like, yeah, I'm probably going to need another day. I, I promise I'd be home for Christmas. It's like, well, you got five days to keep that promise. You know, so it's like, right. He's like, I got the plan, you know, catch and release. And she's like, right. One of Nat's moves, just be safe. And I was like, I love that, you know, being like, right. That's one of the things Nat would do. I, I think that's so, that's just a sweet line in itself. Um, so he plans on getting himself captured. And I just love the, yo, bro, bro. And they, they finally catch up to him and they beat the crap out of him. And I even love at one point, he's like, guys, I can still see through this bag you put over my head. And they're like, yeah, we got him. That was easy. And I love when they do capture him and, and uh, hide out and everything. It's so good where he's like, oh, like, oh, this place. And he's criticizing the guys like, yo, it's kind of hard to get a place like this. You know, all the warehouses and stuff like, and the guy, um, Ivan is like, yo, bro. He's like, no, he's criticizing our place, bro. I love it. And it's just kind of like, all right. Uh, he's like, I'm not who you think I am. You're not Hulkai? He's like, no, uh, well, yes, I am. Then, you know, and it's like, uh, but, you know, she, she's not Kate Bishop. She's Guy. No, she's not Guy. No, Kate Bishop. She's Guy. Like, as in, you know, uh, Ronan that they're looking for. He's like, no, like, who's the boss here? Because it's like talking to furniture to you guys. So... At the same time, this is all happening. Kate's dealing with her family dinner situation uh, with her mom and Jack. And uh, she's prodding Jack about the fact that it's like, oh, it's interesting um, that you had that argument, 
you know, it's like, oh, about your, because she'd asked him earlier about like, oh, it sucks, because I didn't realize it's like, right, I guess that's what he was talking about earlier when he was like, oh, the money situation was going to be his eventually, because I guess like the inheritance was going to come down to him, because I didn't realize Armand was his uncle um, until this episode, but when it's all said and done, um, the fact is he's he doesn't seem too broken up about it and stuff like that. That's also a little suspicious, but he's so smug about it. He's like, it's like, I think he knows Kate was in the Ronin suit. I think the moment he saw Ronin last episode, I think he had a feeling. I think he knows. He knows. He's definitely playing coy with her. Um, but obviously, like, he'd also made this douchebag remark of like, yeah, she's just uh, jealous and, you know, of me and stuff like that in your life and stuff. Like, trying to make it seem like the reason why Kate's acting way. He's like, yeah, I've read a book about a uh, step, you know, being a stepfather and everything. And she's like, yeah, that was kind of a waste of money, Jack. Uh, but um, she ends up questioning him about swords and stuff like that, what they both know about it. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Because it's like, it's definitely a thing of they both know what's up and just Kate doesn't, she thinks she's one step ahead of Jack, but it's like, he definitely knows that you were in that Ronin. So he probably knows you were there. But um, when it was all said and done, though, um, she challenged him to a fencing match and he kept like going easy on her. And she's like, what are you doing? Stop holding back. Like, stop stop letting me win. He's like, oh, you're just really, really good. And then she went to attack him when his back was turned and he he knocked her fencing weapon out of her hand. She's like, see, that's my point. I knew he was lying the entire, he's like, right. So he's like, yes, I did downplay how good I was and also kept lying about it. So you are technically right. But it's like, once again, he's so smug about it. Like there's something there. And she's trying to talk to her mom about it. It's like, yeah, the fact is, it's like, he's He's hiding stuff. You know, it's like, right, there was the suit, there was the street gang. She's like, street gang? And it's like, and the Molotov cocktail, she's like, what did you get mixed up in? It's like, for her, it's like, no, I'm trying to protect you. Like, how about you stay out of this? You know, the fire at your place and everything. It's like, let the police get involved in all this. Like, once again, I... Because even that remark from Armand being like, it's like, oh, my mom, uh, I guess Jack, when it's like Jack, when she talked to, uh, when Kate talked to him last episode, she was like, yeah, I guess he hit the jackpot with my mom. Because I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, my mom's really successful. And then Armand made a remark of, I wouldn't be so sure. Like, she thinks Jack is the one she has to be worried about. I think her mom is the one she should be like more like, because I think Jack might think he's using her but I think in actuality she's using him uh he might be like a pretentious douchebag but in actuality she might be the one in because once again he might have been doing all that stuff like even getting the sword that might not have been his own thing that he might have actually been getting that on her behalf because there are all those swords and I thought like I would say I'd assume first episode that that was all hers but they almost make it sound like it, it's all Jack's stuff they're the sword collection and stuff that that's more him her, than um Eleanor, but I think it is Eleanor, and I, you know, I think that potentially speaks volumes, but we'll see. But it's not until she saw him hand out that Armand candy, which he found that in um, her, um, his uh, um, Armand Third's uh, place, so it's like, okay, you did, the only way you could have gotten that candy is if you were in there, so it's like, you had to be in his house recently to have that on you so you had to have killed him so she's suspicious of it and she tries to call up clint but someone else answers so she uh tracks him so it's like right so uh utilizing the uh bishop security and uh i love that she was like trying to contact him like yeah i got some clues and she's like should i call him back no i shouldn't call him back i probably should it's just like oh like calling back immediately is kind of a risk but it seems like it worked out this time i'm like i love that she did that thing of like she was nervous about it uh, but uh, circling back to it, they're asking about Kate Bishop. She, he's like, I have no idea who she is. And immediately comes crashing down. And he's like, cool. And he's just like, I had everything under control. And he kind of had to come here like an amateur and screw the pooch. It's like, kid, I'm the professional. I've been doing this for years. Before I was even an Avenger, I was working with S.H.I.E.L.D. I know all about this. Like me and Nat have been. But that's also the thing, too. This is probably the first time in a long time he's going. Well, the Ronin stuff, he went solo. But he probably hasn't gone solo in a long time. Because like him and Nat would probably always work together. And he's always had backing in some shape or form until the Ronin stuff. Well, until Civil War and then, like, the Ronin stuff. But, um, because he went from having S.H.I.E.L.D. having his back to the Avengers having his back, so. Um, uh, what, what point was it? Oh, right, I skipped over to a great line that, um, when he went, to, when he was fight going to fight Grills, he was like, I fought Thanos. He's like, I don't love that because that's, there's levels to that joke because it's like, 
I've literally gone up against the universal big bad of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And now I am LARPing with a dude to get back my Ronin suit. Like how the mighty have fallen. I'm a I'm a superhero. I'm a spy. And yet here I am doing this. This is crazy. I fought an a purple alien that had stones that could snap half the universe away. I helped play keep away with said alien that's trying to kill us all. Like that's that's just the beauty of thinking about like, right, we went from end game to Hawkeye. You know, I love and I love that. Because people will look at it like that. It's like, oh yeah, Hawkeye to do with the arrows and stuff like that amongst, you know, a guy with tech, a super soldier, a gamma radiation monster, a literal god. You know, him and Widow have always just been the humans of it. It's like, oh, you're just guy, you're good with guns. She's good with guns and martial arts. You're good with martial arts and bows, but still. Uh, it's just, I just, I, I completely forgot about that line for a second, but uh, yeah. As here we are, and now they're captured. Because he had actually gotten free, but he's like, yo, like, you know, like, I'm not as captured as you thought. Oh, and Kate had to screw the pooch, so now I have to worry about her. It's like, cool, 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 cool. So, it, but like I said, it's going to be interesting, like, she's going to feel that, like, nap void to, to some extent, you know, not having Natasha around. Like, it feels that void to some extent. Having someone have your back is going to be nice to have that in a very, you know, he hasn't had that in a long time. So, uh, I think that's neat. Uh, but aside from that, I uh, just you know we meet the head person behind all of this, and it's Echo. Which you know news already came out that Echo is going to be getting her own uh, spinoff. I know nothing about the character, only that she's basically the opposite of Daredevil, where Matt lost his sight and has enhanced hearing. She lost her hearing, so I don't know whether she plays like an anti-hero role or whether she's just a full-blown villain or like what her circumstances are. But I'm excited to get to find out more about her. Um, just excited to see where the next episode takes us with all of this. This show just so far has already been so much fun and I'm excited to see what happens next. Uh, but really that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.